Hey guys, Cam here from 9to5Google, to Google, and you may remember last week I took delivery of the Oppo F1 Plus. Now, one of the features this has that most other phones, in fact, no other company's phones has, is a fast charging solution called VOOC, or VOOC, if you want to say it phonetically, which I don't. Now, this is a fast charging technology that its marketing team wants to make sure that we know is better than the rest. Now, what it claims is that unlike every other charging technology, this charges really quickly even when you're using the phone and doesn't make your phone heat up too much if you do so. And I decided I wanted to test those claims out, so I got a few different handsets with various types of charging technology to see how it played out in real life. Now, for comparison, I have the Moto X Style or the Moto X Pure, which came with a really incredible Turbo Power 25 charger. Think of this essentially as Quick Charge 2.0 on steroids. It uses the same voltage but almost double the current or double the ampage so you get more power out of your charger. I also had the Galaxy S7 Edge, the Exynos powered model with its own adaptive fast charging charger and the Huawei P9. Of course I had the Oppo with its own VOOC charging power adapter and its own bespoke cable. Now the Galaxy S7 Edge has a 3600 milliamp hour battery and the adaptive fast charging adapter can deliver either 9 volts with 1.57 amps or 5 volts with 2 amps so that's either 15 or 10 watts of output. The Huawei P9 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and that has a switching power adapter with 5 volts and 2 amps or 10 watts output. Now the Moto X style, like I mentioned, the Turbo 25 charger is sort of like Quick Charger 2 or Quick Charge 2.0 on steroids. It does either 9 volts with 2.85 amps or 12 volts with 2.1 amps. So that's either 26 or 25 watts of output. And that's on a battery that's 3000 milliamp hours in size. And of course the Oppo F1 Plus, which has a 2850 milliamp hour battery and its VOOC charger which can deliver 5 volts but with 4 amps of current. That's 20 watts of output. So with most types of fast charging what you often find is that they'll get from 0 to about 80% and then sort of slow down as it trickles the rest up to 100%. So that last portion of charging is normally quite a lot slower than the rest. With Oppo that isn't as obvious or it shouldn't be as obvious. So despite the specifications and the massively powerful Turbo Power 25 charger with the Moto, what we should find is that the Oppo still outcharges the Motorola, especially when it's being used. So what I did is I got all four of the handsets and I drained them below my personal threshold of anxiety, which is 15%. And then I queued up a YouTube playlist, obviously one of our YouTube playlists, and decided to play it for 40 minutes and check and see how hot the batteries were getting and how much charge they were getting while they were playing the videos. Now to do this I used a free amp, it's called Ampere, and it essentially shows you most of the charging statistics you need, including how much power is being delivered, what the battery level is, and also it can tell you the temperature of the phone. So the Galaxy S7 Edge started at around 12% with a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. The Huawei P9 started at 14% with a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. The Moto X Style started at 13% with a temperature of 25.5 degrees Celsius. And the Oppo F1 Plus started at 10% with a temperature of 21.7 degrees Celsius. Now, after a few minutes, it became pretty clear that the Galaxy S7 Edge and the Huawei P9 really weren't coping at all well with being used and charging at the same time. The Moto X Style and the Oppo F1 Plus seem to be sort of level pegging for quite a big chunk of the charging period, but by the time we got to the 40 minute mark, there was a clear winner, and it's probably no surprise. Now the Galaxy S7 Edge after 40 minutes got up to 30%, so that's an approximate gain of about 648 milliamp hours. But it also gained 5.5 degrees Celsius in temperature and took it up to 27.6. The Huawei P9 after 40 minutes was at 33% battery, and that means it gained about 570 milliamp hours, so slightly less than the Galaxy S7 Edge. It also warmed up to about 33 degrees Celsius, gaining 12 degrees. Now the Moto X style did actually do very well. After 40 minutes it was all the way up to 74%. 
that means it gained about the 1,964 milliamp hours. Now the problem with the Motorola's charger, because it's so powerful and delivers a lot of voltage and current, it's actually quite inefficient. Even though it charged very quickly, it made the phone very warm. It was the only phone that got over 40 degrees Celsius. In fact, it got up to almost 42. So the phone got noticeably warm while trying to play a video and charging. Now here's where we get to the interesting thing. The Oppo F1, like I said, started at 10%. After 40 minutes of charging and watching videos at the same time, like all the other devices with full screen brightness, the battery was at 88%. That means it gained 2,223 milliamp hours of power. And the temperature? only got to just above 30 degrees. It got to 31 and a half degrees Celsius, so it's about 10 degrees cooler than the Motorola and a lot more power. So there we have it, the Oppo F1's VOOC charging clearly is the real deal. It may need you to have the bespoke charger and a bespoke cable to work, but those come in the box with the phone. Stay tuned for more on the Oppo F1 Plus as I dig into it. I'll bring you my full review hopefully towards the end of this week. I've been Cam at Cam Bunton on Twitter. I'll see you again soon.